wouldn't it be nice if you had a metric that could track the time between when a business pays its suppliers and when the business receives payment from its customers? The cash conversion cycle, also known as the cash to cash cycle time, does just that. In this lecture, you will learn the foundational elements of the cash to cash cycle time. Let's get started. Cash to cash cycle time looks at the amount of time, usually days, of working capital a business has tied up in managing its inventory or supply chain. Like many metrics, the more efficient the cash to cash cycle time is, the fewer days an organization's cash is unavailable for use. A cash to cash cycle time of one month or less would be considered a good time. On the other hand, a cash-to-cash -cash cycle time of two to three months would show that an organization's cash is tied up and not available for use for what many industries consider to be a dangerous amount of time. Please note that the cash-to-cash -cash cycle time can vary quite a bit between industries. With this in mind, it should be every organization's objective to reduce their cash-to-cash -cash cycle time. How do you do this? One of the primary ways that a company can reduce the amount of time that cash is tied up is to optimize the inventory they have on hand. If cash is not tied up in inventory, it is available for use. This is why continuous improvement strategies like Lean are a very effective way to improve cash-to-cash -cash cycle time. Be aware that improving your overall inventory strategy will require alignment of all parties, including supply chain partners, as well as finding and removing waste and creating a more streamlined organization. Improving order-to-cash processes will also reduce your cash-to-cash -cash cycle time. As invoice processing and receipt of customer payments improves, the amount of time that an organization's capital is tied up will improve as well. Three possible areas a company can look to improve their cash-to-cash -cash cycle time are First, invoicing processes can be mapped out and waste can be eliminated to create a more streamlined process flow. Second, Many organizations can also reduce or eliminate wasteful activities that do not transform information or materials in any way. And finally, organizations may also analyze antiquated systems and processes and choose to revise inefficient processes that increase the likelihood of billing errors and causing information or material defects. You may be wondering, how do you calculate this cash conversion cycle? The cash conversion cycle is calculated by adding days inventory outstanding and days sales outstanding and then subtracting days payable outstanding. Let's look at an example. It takes K&K Manufacturing an average of 60 days to sell its inventory. Once they have sold their product, it then takes them about 30 days to collect payment from customers. In general, K&K pays its suppliers in 75 days. With this data, we can calculate our cash-to-cash -cash cycle time. First, we add 60 days inventory outstanding and 30 days sales outstanding. Then we subtract 75 days payables outstanding and we get a cash-to-cash -cash cycle time of 15 days. Now, you may be wondering, how do I calculate days inventory outstanding, days sales outstanding, and days payable outstanding? Well, in the next few lectures, we will share with you about these three elements of the cash-to-cash -cash cycle time. Now, before we go, let's challenge our minds by answering the following question. Let's say K&K Manufacturing takes an average of 32 days to sell its inventory. 
Once they have sold their product, it then takes them about 90 days to collect payment from customers, and in general, K&K pays its suppliers in about 60 days. What is K&K's cash-to-cash cycle time, and what observations can you make from this metric? Thanks again for watching, everyone, and we look forward to seeing you right back here on Lean Strategies International LLC, where you can find solutions that ignite your power.